How y'all doing? Hey, can you make this louder? Well, you can shut it where the sun don't shine. Your backbone slip. in my book were James Brown. That was the legitimate, the stagecraft, the master of them all. But unless you had other stuff, I can't dance like James Brown, and neither, neither could Jagger, even though he copied him. You know, all that crazy white boy dancing. No, no, you gotta look at the master. You gotta look at James Brown. Look up old YouTube videos and you'll see stuff you won't believe. So we decided to put together the strangest, band I'd ever seen or heard of, the band we wanted to see on stage, the band that would never turn their backs to you, the band that would never look to their shoes and think that they were important, the band that made a complete spectacle out of, our, out of ourselves, out of themselves, uh, and all for you, because if you're not there, we're not there. So it's such a simple equation. And the idea after you get fame and riches and all the rest of that is not to be an asshole is to try to keep your feet on the ground and understand that even though you're on stage and all that, that the real bosses are you guys, and we just work here. And that's an important lesson for anybody that gets up on stage. When you start to see just jackass behavior by anybody that's got any kind of notoriety, whether they're politicians or your you know, rock band or whoever, call them, call them on that. Hey, I'm your boss. Do that. I'm telling you. So what am I going to talk about? Well, you mentioned, obviously you mentioned the Beatles. And, and obviously for you as a singer-songwriter, the Beatles kind of started it all. So why don't we talk about the very first song and how you decided you were actually going to write a song. Well, it was interesting to me uh, when I first came to America, because I wasn't born here, I was born in Israel. I know I don't look Swiss. And when I first came to America, I saw a TV show. Actually, I, before that, all I heard was Chuck Berry. And I was proud to do the eulogy at his funeral. Very sad. There was nobody of note there. And I happened to just be there, and they called me up on stage. But the forefathers were Chuck Berry, Little Richard, very few others. Without them, this music wouldn't exist. And for millennials, you have to understand the world existed before a week ago. And it's not just Selena Gomez, once upon a time, there were important artists who came out of nowhere and created this music. Chuck Berry, you know? That's Chuck Berry. Without that, we wouldn't be here. In fact, he did. He could do that because his hands were so big, that movement was a piano mover. Before him, nobody was doing that. He had huge hands, which you know, you know what that means. 
Huge gloves. Thank you. But somehow this sounds really thin. So, so the years go by and I love tossing and turning and Bobby Freeman and Rock and Rob and all those early rock songs. And then I see the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show and it just blows my mind. These four guys lots. And I had an accent at that point, so I felt at home. I felt like an outsider. And what are you doing down there? You okay? Okay, oh settle down. Don't get excited. <laughs> and I saw the Beatles and it became this pivotal moment. I said, wow, look at all those girls screaming and that may not be the worst job in the world. And that's, and literally within a week or two, I decided to learn how to play a C and then an A minor and then an F, but I stuck in a high E because the girls like that. And then a G. And originally, I only knew how to play these kinds of chords. You know, the way, the way uh, folk people play. Not rockers. Rockers do this. They do that or... So, these guys, the country people, did that. And I noticed hundreds and hundreds and thousands of songs use those chords. You know, all that. My darling, I love you. It's just like heaven. I forgot the fucking words. Because I love you. I love you. I do. Angel baby. My angel baby. Ooh. You know, you know. But the chords were also used by the Beatles. But of course they did it in harmony. The, the genius of them is they actually hit wrong notes. It's called passing dissonance. This far, But the harmony was, here's the C. Here's the harmony. This part. That note does not exist in this chord. They're hitting this. You hear it? It's wrong. It should be this. But when you stick this harmony, this part, along with this part, you get magic. Only they did that, using the same chords. And then once I knew those chords, I said, you know, I can't write lots of stuff. What can I write? And I heard the Kinks, and they had a song called Well Respected Man that went something like this. They all started like that. It goes, uh, well, he gets up in the morning and he goes to work at nine. Comes back home at 513. Same, we're on the same train every time. He's a well-respected man about town. Do the best thing so conservatively. That's a well-respected man by the Kinks, using all those same chords. Can you please make my guitar louder? Sure. I appreciate it. I do know where you live. <laughs> louder? Feast or famine. See, that's what you get with digital. For the hand thing, you can just massage it. Somewhere between what you had and where we are. Okay, so these were the chords of well respected man. Well, he gets up in the morning. He's a well respected man about C, A minor, F, G. So I decided to write my own song, and it starts the same way as the Kings. Mine was My uncle is a raft And he always keeps me floating He is so good to me He treats me tenderly Yuck! It doesn't matter who you are So 
So that song from 1966 is in the box set. In case you don't know, the box set, go to GeneSimmonsVault.com, is literally an... They all do. <laughs> Every single one of them. <laughs> is literally the, the largest box set of all time. And for those of you that don't know what's on the inside, may I show you? Okay. So it's, it's here. I'm going to bring it to you. Yeah, I thought it was going to be on stage so oh, it can no, show up. No, it would make sense. But how would... Uh, Joe, they're going to fly. Put it on this chair, please. Put your chair in the middle and people can check it out. Thank you, boss. And for those of you that don't know, this weighs 40 pounds. This is real stuff. Those are metal pieces, metal hardware. And until I met the Rhino folks, I hadn't met anybody that understood my vision, which is to always give more, to do something that had never been done before, and which has that kind of wow factor. And I heard some of you say that, because who wants to go through life without saying, well, oh, that's interesting. No, you want to go, wow. So, originally we were going to have this, uh, this is an actual combination. Just like in safes, we were actually going to have a, a combination, different ones. Each of you was going to have a different combination, but you would have forgotten the combination. You would have remembered it, but not that guy. Plus, it would have added 40 extra pounds of weight into the door. So I don't know if anyone wanted to carry home an 80-pound vault. So we decided to just, that he's going to take over. So when you open it, you're tempted to turn the handle. Don't turn the handle. Pull it straight ahead. And, <laughs> and you'll notice that this light goes on, just like your favorite fridge. This took forever. It'll always go on and off when you close the door. Now, there's a string over here. Yeah, I know, there are jokes. But if you pull that, if you pull that string, this astonishing book comes out, which actually weighs quite a bit. Here, you try it. It's not heavy, it's not my brother. It's not heavy. <laughs> Inside the book, you're going too fast. That's why. <laughs> How a, what a party killer. Wow. So inside the book are stories about the, about the songs, where I was, who I was doing, blah, blah, blah. A lot of photos, all of it for my collection. And inside are 167 tracks. Literally, the CDs are in, like right here. See? You do the stories on the thing, and it's conveniently right there. And then, then you have the Gene Simmons action figure, of course, featuring the powerful and attractive Gene Simmons. And this has never been available anywhere. And is actually the finest. I've had a few action figures. This is the best I've ever seen, by far. Then you have a gold coin, real collector's item, that says, if it's too loud, you're too old, in Latin. And has my money back sign and all that. People are gonna offer you a lot of money for this, but don't, just hold on to it. And so after all this, see, look, he's already ahead of me. What the hell? <laughs> Can you tell you he used to be on stage? So then, what we decided to do was to have a trick door. And this door, I close it, he keeps opening it. What are you doing? Just stand there and look pretty. What the f so this door was designed to do something, again, that nobody's ever done before. You know, I collect Kiss, I collect me and all that. And so I have a huge collection, in bubble wrap and all that, and it's Deluxe, pristine. I wanted to give a piece of my collection to you. No two vaults are going to be the same. So we literally, he had the enviable job of going through my stuff, literally picking a worn glove or a piece of my dragon boots, or it could be anything, a collectible kiss booklet from 1804, all kinds of stuff <laughs> is in here. So I swear on my children, I have two that I know of, 
I don't know what's in there. So we'll give you an example of what yours kind of might look like, please. To open it, you just press. To close it, you press. What's that? Oh. This is a, an Ace Freely keychain, collectible, of course. Oh, I don't even know what it is. This is like a collectible CD uh, holder, uh, holder. Holder. It's going to get worse. Oh, there's even more? Okay, this is all for my collection. You'll see on the back it's stamped a coin and all that, and um, so there's not a crease or a thing, this is all mint and all comes from my collection, bubble wrap. That's it, right? That's it. Okay, I think that's enough. You give me back that thing. <laughs> yeah. So close. So put down, so down, close. down payment on your next. But literally, lyrics, CDs, um, could be an action figure, could be anything. and. I wanted to do that because, you know, really when you think about it, we all have cool stuff that we keep in our attic and every once in a while you go up there and you go, what are you gonna do with it? And people actually put the, you know, the blanket outside of the grass and they stick all this stuff that was important to them, it was part of their lives. These are all pieces of my life and I wanted to share it with you. So when you get your vault, I'm going to personalize it to you. I'll probably get a little teary-eyed. And I'm not joking about that, because you made my life possible. It's already starting to happen. And uh, I want you to go home and surprise yourself and all your friends. What else is in there? Like a Cracker Jacks box. See, this whole idea started with Cracker Jacks. When I was a kid, I used to get peanuts and popcorn, they're caramel covered, but we all bought it because of the prize. What's going to be inside? Yeah. What's, what's Christmas without prizes? But you don't want to find out in July what you're getting in Christmas, right? You want to have Christmas morning and tear open the things. That's what I want this to be. And you take this home, and it takes... Young lady, you come up here with your orange thing in front of you. Yeah, come on up. Pick this up. I want you to give them a sense of what 40 pounds feels like. Besides me. Pick it up. You gotta use two hands. It's the real deal. Not this flyaway plastic stuff. This is gonna last generations. Thank you, I get out. I like girls. Yup, I sure do. Okay, now we always have Often enough, anyway, we have friends that show up. Ace Fraley came to three of these. L.A., I think Minneapolis, someplace else. May I have the guitar again? Instead of texting? Fucking curse of my mind. I'm getting the hot chicken! <laughs> Talking to my mom. Mom, thank you for giving me birth. Just a minute. So I urge you to go to YouTube. And this happens at every place we go to. They never tighten the mic, so just like that. You go on YouTube and you type in women texting and falling into fountains in malls. <laughs> and you see these gorgeous women with beehive hairdos texting and walking on their high heels in malls, of course, and then they do flips right into the wall. <laughs> yep, love those. That's called justice. <laughs> and so, look, uh, it all started with simple chords. And I just want to let you know that uh, songs are very bizarre. I have Gene Simmons master classes where I teach people how to play instruments in under two hours and write their own songs in under two, two hours. Yeah, it's not as tough as you think it is. It's actually easy, but what's hard is to write something good. So you can have a song like... Right? You don't even have to sing. Wow, thanks. 
You make my heart sing, right? The guy that wrote that is uh, Chip Taylor. He's John Boyd's brother. So he wrote that. He couldn't come up with a melody initially, so he just put the words that Wow thing. I'll figure it out later. I don't know what is it. You will. You make my heart sing. You make everything uh, groovy. Come on, wild thing. And, you know, Al Gargone, who was a guitar player, who I knew, said uh, he was just sketching, like studio. There's no such word in the English language. When Phil Collins wrote that, it's called scatting. You know, I'm writing a song. I said, I purpose to get to. And I don't know what to do. You know, you're just making up words and throwing them against the floor. Obladi, oblada, owap, babaluap, owap, bam, boom. These are not words, okay? They're just placeholders. But sometimes it's so cool that you keep it, right? Whether it's the studio or wap, babaluap, or tutta fruity. Tutti fruity. Tutti fruity! All rooted. What does that mean? I don't know. But it's cool. Uh, you know, ba 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 What does that mean? I have no idea. So this same guy, Chip Taylor, only knew three chords. G, C, D. Wow thing. Then later he got better. Just call me angel of the morning. And when I teach people how to do that, I go, we're going to take the wild thing chord, or any chord, or you can just go. You can actually write your own song really fast. When you take a hammer and slam your thumb, what, what do you say is an exclamation? Say something. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! I got a pin, 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 bam, bam, bam. You figured out later. I said, uh, oh shit! Oh shit! Wow! Oh shit! You can do anything you want. That you don't put on the vault. My uncle is a rap on the vault, but not that. <laughs> not that one. Vault two. Oh, there will be. <laughs> So today I'm, I hear the powerful and attractive Vinnie Vincent is going to come down and say hello to you. And I haven't seen Vinnie in 20 years, so that'll be a hoot. Later on, you know, we have this Gene Simmons band that's playing, oh, we're headlining festivals, I don't know how that happened. So when Kiss isn't playing and we're going to July and doing some big outdoor shows, uh, stadiums and stuff in Spain, and literally the day after, I'm in the Czech Republic headlining the Masters of metal or something like that and we headlined at a few festivals and the band's just doing great we just have a great time so we can do stuff like uh yeah. so some people don't know i actually started playing guitar first played a little keyboards just enough you know to write songs and uh, i noticed there weren't many bass players so I switched to bass to make sure I could get a, a gig. You know, everybody wanted to be a guitar player or a drummer. Nobody wanted to be a bass player, so I did. McCartney, likewise, started off playing guitar. And that guy is just an anomaly. That he could write, you know, when you hear Blackbird sitting in the dead of night, and you hear those chords he came up with yesterday, that's really accomplished guitar player. It's because he was a guitar player. Okay. Uh, should we take some questions? Well, you want to, want to take some questions? Vinny should be here in about five minutes. I was going to ask you, you know, with this, you talking about how that took three chords and turned it into other songs. A lot of songs on the vault kind of show your songwriting process. It shows a song that you wrote and you went back and you took pieces and wrote a different song. And so talk about the evolution of some of the songs and maybe play parts of some of the songs. Everybody does this. If you're Picasso or Da Vinci or anybody, or if you write books, you sketch first. And you, and I like that chord, that's kind of a D minor. And they were 
all the George Harrison kind of chords, you know, like. Uh, you know, that's George Harrison. You did a lot of that picking stuff. But I like the uh, I like the D minor. And there was an old song I wrote in 1968 called Eskimo Sun. He happened to have heard it, put it together the box set. He said, you know, like, here's how we started talking about this song called Eskimo Sun. And I just, you know, never recorded it. We did it in a group called Rainbow. Goes up. Uh, Eskimo Sun. You shine at me. Mother love. Far as the eyes can see. And it just went on. on. That's on the box there from 1969, I think it is. But I rewrote it. I liked the chords, but I didn't think it grabbed the vibe, so I went. Only you. And that wound up on an album called Elder, which 12 people bought. Stop. Why, for heaven's sakes, did you buy two instead of one? No, what? Wow. Well, you'll be glad to know that the, uh, the guys that play in the Gene Simmons band are going to be here later. We actually do. So if we raise your hand, I'll try and work my way to you to get to get a question. And you can, while he's working his way, when Vinny comes down, please feel free. He'll want to play with you and show you what he can do, but just be, feel free to have a conversation with him. This is your time. So uh, one of my favorite songs of yours is Man of a Thousand Faces. Can you talk about writing that song? Um, <coughs> Lon Chaney Sr., the guy that did Phantom the Opera and, and all that and Hunchback of Notre Dame, and lots more. There was a guy named Creighton Tull Sr., and his mother and father were deaf, so he had to communicate with sign language. And he couldn't figure out what to do in life, and he went to Hollywood and literally invented the modern prosthetic. You know, nowadays you want to look like an alien in Star Wars, somebody has to put on all that stuff. He did it himself. So when you see the Phantom of the Opera silent movie or Hunchback of Notre Dame, he, he had his own makeup things, and they still use his, um, the things he created, putting in plastic tubes and nostrils to make him stand out, and glue and all that stuff to lift. So I became a big fan of his, and I remembered that they used to call him the Man of a Thousand Faces, and, uh, because in every movie you couldn't tell who he was. And so I started a production company called Man of a Thousand Faces, and the first act I signed was a new band called Van Halen. Yeah. Produced their first 24-track uh, demo, 15 songs, which became the first album and the second album. But I always wanted to write... 
That's right. So it's. Now they're all based on three chords. It's really wild thing. So I just, you know, fancy it up. You'd be shocked how many, and I've used those chords many times. It's all about the melody and the lyric. You know that song, don't worry, be happy, right? It doesn't even have chords, it was just a cappella. The big secret is that everybody here creates music. Animals create music. Birds sing, dogs howl, sometimes guys howl, see what I did there? Everybody is creative. You just don't do anything about it. When you go in the shower or when you're singing in the pond or you're busy rearranging your thousand pair of shoes, yeah, I'm talking to you. Shoes sometimes that you've never worn but you bought. Is that true? She doesn't do that? Really? How much do you love her? Wow. And, but everybody, everybody's musical. We're born music. Have you ever seen little babies when they first start to talk? That's actually melody. It's real music. And so the difference between songwriters, I'm okay, there are some really great songwriters, is that they do something about it. They hear it in their head and they figure out what the chords are. In fact, one of the songs that I wrote, uh, which sounds nothing like Kiss and everything, because my mind doesn't work like that, is a song called I Dream a Thousand Dreams. Now, that's, that was on a solo record, and nobody really cared, but it's the only song I ever wrote where all the lyrics and the melody came at one time. I grew up in the middle of the night. I woke up, rather, and I heard, I dream a thousand dreams. I'd walk a million miles for you If you just give me a smile I could die and be happy too I'm like, whose who song is that? Is that the Platters or something? You know, I cry a million If I, uh, uh, I do it all for you If there's all, uh, if I do it all for you If there's ever my dreams come true Cause every night would be ecstasy If I could be with you Yes, every night would be ecstasy If I could be with you And I don't know where that song came from. It, I didn't know what the chords are. I, it, I dreamed it. I got up and I tried to figure out as best I could what the chords are. And I think the chords are something like this. Be shocked. Do you love me? Do you love me? Hey, stupid, stupid, hey, no. Hundreds and hundreds, thousands of songs. Louis Lou. Wow, fan. <laughs> Who wants to talk? There's a guy with glasses who looks like a bad started off as a script that I wrote, a story and a, and a thing in Hollywood. I was at the Beverly Hills Hotel, which is where, by the way, Irving Berlin wrote White Christmas. Yeah, at the Beverly Hills Hotel. So I was staying there, I don't know why, 
and I wrote The Elder just came to my mind. And then, and I was going to get actors to do it, then Bob Ezrin, the producer, read that and said, let's make a concept record. But it did start off with a movie idea. And, uh, Still waiting. Do, do pardon? something. Do something? Do something with the other. Do uh, a cruise with the other. Oh, you mean a theme? The theme, yeah. You think anybody will show up? Yeah. <laughs> Raise your hand. Who's going to show up for that? Okay. Uh, uh, uh. The second statement is short, Jim. Thank you, sir, for always looking like a rock star. <laughs> I borrowed this trip from Paul Stanley. <laughs> It's not what I'm going to do. But my is. Now, the other thing is that when we first started doing this in Los Angeles, we started off just meeting everybody. And, the, you know, the thing is that when we get to know each other, we tend to talk. You tell me your story, I tell you my story. Then we hug and I tell you how much it means to me and stuff like that. And. The thing we learned after the first one is, if I take too much time with you, the person at the end of the line is going to get pissed off. So, between a rock, I'm between an a, rock, a rock and a hard place. I want to make everybody happy, and I want to thank each one of you personally for making my life possible. And there's going to be a bad guy who's going to stay there and say, look, in order to get through this, if you do some numbers, just stay with me. Let's say I take 10 minutes with each person. That's six people an hour. You want, you want to do the arithmetic? So if we've got 50 folks here, you're, you're, just, you're going to be... Eight hours. Excuse me? Eight hours and uh, 20 minutes. Eight hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> without TV breaks or anything like that. I mean, I like to hold it in, but not for eight hours. So if we do... Five, you get what I'm saying. I don't want to keep... You know, last person in line waiting eight and a half hours just to be able to come up and say hello. So I'll try to spend as much time and talk about stuff. And at some point, somebody's going to say, you know, somebody's waiting. Okay? I just wanted to let you know. People don't realize, oh, it's only ten minutes. <laughs> Six people in one hour. So it takes a long time. And I won't stop. Pardon me? What kind of watch? I'm going to ask uh, this young lady to step forward and read the time. Oh, you don't have your glasses on? Okay, what does it say? How about this young lady here? What time does it say? It says 12.05. Okay, what this is, is a present that my daughter gave me many years ago. I wear it every day, but it, it's, ne it's never, I never work it, it's not on, it's always the wrong time. Yeah, it's the wrong time. So we could be in the middle of the night, it'll say 12 o'clock or 12 o'clock. I just wear it this Pardon me? What did they say? Ah, it's right twice a day. Here all day, try the wheel. Yeah. I'm old enough to have seen that guy, Henny Youngman, playing at the Flagler Hotel, I think it was in upstate New York. You know, the guys that go, uh, take my wife, please. I was actually there, I saw that. When I was a child, I was so ugly, when I was born, the doctor slapped my mother. It's a joke. Okay, we should get started. There's plenty of food here. You're going to be treated special because you are. The uh, John and Paul are here, and George and Ringo too. See what I did there? For the uh, Gene Simmons money back soda line that are going to be in every 7 Eleven, starting with a thousand stores this month, and then everywhere. And Kiss ain't going anywhere. We're going to tour. Gene Simmons band is touring. We're having a great time. Be alive. And even though I'm going to be 69, very soon, and the boy, look at me. Uh, we're all healthy, happy, and we're just going to continue until and if and when you finally 
uh, ask us to get off the stage. And that day, I will tell you, will be the saddest day of my life. That day. In fact, they're gonna have to, if I'm gonna die, they're gonna have to drag me kicking and screaming because I love life so much. But especially, life without you means nothing. I'll tell you about it backstage. See you later.